Please turn to Jeremiah chapter 10. We're going to be looking from verses 19 down to verses 25, Jeremiah 19. And this section is what we might call the broken prophet or the broken hearted prophet. This is Jeremiah giving us some insight into what's happening in his life as he ministers this this powerful word. And this word is a word that, that not only changed the nation, it changed the course of international history. And at the same time, while Jeremiah is in this phenomenal public ministry, something's going on in his own life. And, and I find this passage exceptionally moving. Let's read verse 19. Woe is me because of my hurt. My wound is grievous. But I said, truly, this is an affliction and I must bear it. Verse 20. My tent is destroyed. All my cords are broken. My children have gone from me and they are not. There is no one to spread my tent out again and to set up my curtains. This is an expression Uh, where it talks about my tent is destroyed, all my cords are broken, my children have gone far from me. It's really about the family home. This is poetic of talking about a home, the home where children are, where a mum and dad are, where together you've built this home. And here they're saying, this, this is saying, probably at this point, Jeremiah talking on behalf of the people, our homes are destroyed. And notice the difference between a house and a home. A home is where those you love live with you whom they love. And here Jeremiah is is saying that what is about to happen is going to result in the destruction of homes. In fact, it almost sounds like it's already begun. The way the people were living had been destroying homes, destroying homes. Children didn't want anything to do with their parents. Husbands didn't want anything to do with their wives. And it says there is no one to spread out my tent again. That's the role of the man. The head of the house is gone. The children have been scattered. That's a terrible picture of a home life. Terrible picture. We could jump ahead to the application and notice that the enemy wants to destroy family homes. He wants to destroy, to destroy families. We read on. Next verse. For the shepherds are stupid and do not inquire of the Lord. Therefore they have not prospered and all their flocks are scattered. This is a strange one, I think. Jeremiah is saying... This is the condition of Israel. The home has been neglected. The head of the home, the father, the husband, has left. Because he's left, there's been no discipline in the home. Children have scattered. The home itself has fallen into disrepair. But the next level of support and care, the shepherds, the priests, the leaders in the sense of those of the royal family, those that provide leadership, are careless. Careless in the sense that they don't care about God and his ways. They don't care about God and his ways. Think about the greatest shepherd that ever lived. Who was that? Jesus Christ. Think about what happened whenever he was swamped by crowds. What did Jesus do when he was swamped by crowds? He withdrew. And it's easy to think he withdrew to be alone, but he didn't. He withdrew to be alone with his father, the great shepherd. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that amazing? Think about this. He tells Peter, his leading disciple, It has been revealed to me in the spirit that you are going to come under satanic bombardment. Remember that? He said, Satan 
has asked to sift you like wheat. What was, what, what was this insight that Jesus was giving here? Because the, the response, I guess, that I'm expecting is, so Peter, I want you to stay in fellowship with me. Just stick close to me. Just hang around here. If you got a problem, just jump on the phone. Give me a call. I'll be around there. We'll get 12 support team members around you. We, what did Jesus say? But I have prayed for you. Isn't that, intrig- Isn't that intriguing? I think parents should shepherd their children. And notice what Jesus did. He set the example. He spent time alone with his father. That's what a shepherd does. Here's Jeremiah prophesying to, to Israel. Israel is in utter rebellion to God. And Jeremiah steps back says, but God, don't let that be my story. So here's my prayer. It's in verse 24. Change me, O oh God, but be gentle. And don't, don't let it be in anger. I hope we can make that our prayer, church. Verse 25, he reminds his people that this is what is about to happen because they couldn't pray this prayer. Pour out your wrath on the nations that know you not and on peoples, on the peoples that call not on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and they have devoured him and consumed him and laid, his, laid waste his habitation. Jeremiah still cares for his people. And here's a postscript. The people that did this to Jerusalem, who destroyed it, the Babylonians, would themselves be destroyed just as Jeremiah prayed. They were destroyed by the Medo-Persians, obliterated, never to rise again as a world power. So here's the question. What does it take for God to correct you? Do you need utter disaster or can you be corrected gently? Jeremiah's prayer should be our prayer. 